Hello there, this is Chatterbox, and recently I've been thinking about game engines. I have a few videos titled Game Without a Game Engine, where I make games using various game frameworks like Raylib. But some people think this is cheating, and that it isn't hard enough, saying that real programmers make their games from scratch using only C++ and OpenGL. The thing is though, I already use the Unity game engine, and I know how to use it pretty well. In fact, I released a commercial game using it a while ago. Unity basically does everything I need already, so there'd be absolutely no point in just making another simple 3D or 2D engine like most other game developers do, that just renders a cube or a few sprites or something. And to do something more complicated would take a load of time, and it'd still be worse than Unity. That basically led to me dropping the whole idea. Until... Low Res Jam 2022. Now, I didn't participate in Low Res Jam this year. In fact, uh... I didn't even know it was happening until about two months after it ended, but it did give me an idea. I remember trying to make a game for Low Res Jam 2020, which I think actually turned out quite well, but it was a bit of a struggle making it in Unity, which isn't exactly designed for really low resolution pixel perfect stuff, despite some of the absolutely amazing things I see people make with it. And as I was thinking of that, I remembered my old idea to make my own game engine. Specifically, making an engine for a small 64x64 64 64 pixel game seems perfect, and also something I can accomplish without growing a beard before I finish it. And believe me, that would take me a long time. So, where do I start? Well, that is a good question. I know I want to use C++ for this project, but before we get any work done, we need to pick a graphics framework. I know I said earlier that I wanted to make everything from scratch like the real programmer, but believe me, if I went much lower level, I'd be making my own graphics card. A graphics framework doesn't do too much work for me. It basically just allows me to do the work in the first place. For our graphics frameworks, we have three options. There's DirectX, OpenGL, or Vulkan. DirectX is used quite a lot in AAA game development, as it's pretty fast and it supports a load of modern features. Vulkan is also a newish graphics library, and it's becoming quite popular due to its great performance. It also happens to be very complicated, so I'm going to avoid that one. And for the last option, there's OpenGL. And OpenGL seems to be easier to learn than the other options, from what I can find on the internet, and it's also compatible with a lot of platforms although it isn't really incredible when it comes to performance. Of course, we don't need incredible performance, and I'm not very smart, so OpenGL seems like the perfect option. Now I've decided to use OpenGL, I actually need to use it, and there's a problem with that. I have absolutely no idea how to. Thankfully, the internet came to the rescue, and after googling the phrase, learn OpenGL, I found a super helpful website called Learn OpenGL. It's actually a really good website. It has a free ebook that teaches you all the way through learning how OpenGL works, and this meant that I could actually work for all the steps of setting up OpenGL. I did mention I was stupid though, and so I didn't actually go that far into learning how OpenGL works. And that's because for this project, I didn't actually need to know that much about how OpenGL works. I just followed it until I got to rendering a texture, and that was basically as far as I needed to go, because I managed to come up with one of the most stupid game engine architectures of all time. And Chatterbox, you might wonder. How on earth did you come up with this idea? Well, I was sat down thinking up how to make the game engine, and I thought, hmm, a screen is made up of pixels. Something else is made up of pixels, a texture. What I can do is just store all the pixel data in a single array, and just turn that into a texture and slap it on the screen. Genius! This actually saves me an insane amount of work, because it means I don't need to spend more time learning about OpenGL, and it really shouldn't be that hard to convert a pixel array to a texture, and then render it to the screen. Right? Wrong. Well, kinda. It's actually quite easy to render pixel data to the screen, but that's if you know what you're doing, and I don't. The first problem was making the texture. There's a function that converts a pixel array to a texture, nice and easy, but there's also a lot more parameters than just a pixel array that you need to pass in. Two of these parameters are called format and type, and these caused me a lot of confusion, because there are so many different values, and I could not find anywhere on the internet which ones to actually use. OpenGL actually gives you quite a bit of control over the internal workings of your program, meaning you can choose the layout and format of pixels in your texture. I ended up working out that it'd be easiest having red, green and blue components for each of my pixels. Each pixel's value should go from 0 to 255, meaning it's 8 bits per colour, or 1 unsigned byte, which works out to 3 bytes per pixel, as we don't need to bother with transparency because that just makes things complicated. From there, I put those parameters into the pixel array to texture function, and then I finally had a texture that I could render to the screen. But something was wrong. Why is it so blurry? This turned out to be because I had the texture filtering set to bilinear and not nearest neighbour. Nearest neighbour is the best for pixel art graphics, since it doesn't blur things. I corrected that after a bit of research, and now I have something that can actually render pixels. 
so now I can render pixels to the display. But I had to fill an array with those pixels when I compiled the program, and I couldn't change them in real time, which is kind of what most games are about. The program was actually already rendering pixels every frame, so I just needed to change the values in the array. I originally did this using a for loop for the x and y positions, but there was a big problem with that, and that was it was really slow. I mean, I'm only doing 64x64 64 64 pixels, but I still wanted it to be flexible and maybe go to higher resolutions, so this really wasn't acceptable. This meant that I needed to optimise the program, however to do that, I had to first figure out why the program was running so badly. My first suspicion was my janky pixel array system, as opposed to using shaders and buffers, which certainly causes some performance problems. I didn't want to rework the entire program though, and I thought there was probably something else slowing the program down. Considering I was calling the set pixel method about 250,000 times a second, I decided to have a look into that. There's a few things in this that initially spring to mind as not great. I mean, while this looks fine on the surface, there are several things in here that are really reducing the performance. The first thing we need to address is the if statement. This is checking every pixel in the array to see if it's the one we're looking for. This is bad because processors do something called pipelining, which is basically attempting to process some instructions in advance while executing another one. An if statement can throw this off as it can change the course of the program, causing the processor to possibly have to delete all the stuff it's currently working on as it's no longer valid. We want to avoid this if possible when working on low-level-ish code. The next problem is the double for loop, which is basically just doing a load of unnecessary work. This can be pretty easily avoided by simply using a mathematical expression for the index value, as opposed to running through the entire array to find it. By doing this, we can also get rid of that pesky if statement. I rewrote the function with all of this in mind, and that was quite an improvement in performance. In fact, quite a big improvement in performance. A 400,000% improvement in performance, to be precise. Well, now that's sorted, I can adjust the values of the pixels in real time. This still isn't a game engine though, this is just a renderer, and a pretty terrible one at that, so we need to actually make it usable as a game engine now. Most game engines perform their calculations every frame, in something called an update method. We have something similar to that, but at the moment it's nested deep inside the renderer, and we don't really want users to have to write all their code inside that, because that would be really messy. I made some parent scripts to the renderer so I could easily nest away all my horrible rendering code from the user and that would also let me start working on the rest of the engine. I wanted to expose the update and start methods as quickly as possible so I could separate everything a bit better, but first I needed to figure out how to do that. I know that C++ uses things called pointers, variables that hold a reference to other things. I thought I could use a pointer to address a function, allowing me to pass functions around between classes. It turns out that I could, so I used that knowledge to pass around user-defined functions into another class in the engine, so I could call them there which made code quite a lot easier to write, even though it might not be the correct way of going about things. So now the user's logic is separated from the engine a bit more, but we still need to add a few more features to the engine to make it actually not, you know, be horrible to use. A good start would be being able to read the colour of a given pixel, as opposed to just setting it. With the knowledge that I obtained from the earlier adventure of the setPixel function, I quickly whipped up a function that would also read the data from the pixel array. I also made a few more utility functions, but then I realised I was missing a big part of a game engine. You see, Games normally allow you to do things in them through inputting values, and I couldn't do that with my engine yet, which seemed like a bit of an oversight. OpenGL does make user input slightly easier, as it has cross-platform built-in functions for handling it, as opposed to me having to use the horrible Win32 DLLs and figure that out. I kind of just recycled the OpenGL input system and reworked it a bit to work with my code. So now I've got rendering and input, my game engine is basically done. Disregarding how incomplete my completed game engine is, for now, I reckon it's time to make a game. And what better game than Flappy Bird? So, let's go. First, I need a game engine. And um, well, we have one of those. Next, I need to write some code to get the engine running. After that, we need a player. Now we'll make the player fall and be able to move as well. Flappy Bird isn't really Flappy Bird without those pipes that the player bumps into, so let's make those. Now we need to write some code to handle collisions between them. Since we just have pixels, all we need to do is check if their positions overlap. And there we go, a Flappy Bird knockoff. With that done, the engine works. The code's up on GitHub, but I'm not selling soap to wash your eyes out if you happen to look at it, because let's address it. There are quite a few problems with this engine. The first major one being that it isn't even a library, so it's really hard to import, and that's probably the first thing I'm going to fix um, among my very large list. If I get time, I'll certainly make a version 2 where hopefully it's actually usable and not just a janky prototype. Also, isn't this type of thing known as a game framework, not a game engine? But ignoring the shortcomings, I have actually set out to make what I wanted. A quick, minimal and pretty easy to use bit of kit that allows me to make games. And I'm pretty happy with that. Will I make a full game with it? Probably not. But iterating on small concepts? Absolutely. 
Once I get it ported as a library, I might also work on some bindings for other languages so I can use it all the time. Comment a programming language that you think would lend itself well to this. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you liked it. It helps me pay for having my computer on, and I really need to use it as heating during the winter. But that's all from me. Have a good day!